can either be done the easy way, the hard way, or in the most entertaining way. I'll squash your f***ing head like a grapefruit if you don't give me a name. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 serious movie interrogation scenes. Ah! For this list, we've looked at the most intense interrogation scenes out there. Funny examinations aren't included, as those are for another time and other lists. Number 10, hammering out the truth, Drive. Where's Cook? He's an interesting one. Who's that? It's over there. We begin by looking at a particularly creative method of interrogation. If you have a hammer but no nails, and a bullet but no gun, then there's a need for a little bit of improvisation and a whole lot of threatening behavior. Whose money do I have? <laughs> Don't worry, they're gonna come get it. Ryan Gosling manages both as he pins his adversary to the strip club floor, shaping up to manually drill the bullet through his forehead. Do you remember this? There's a lack of clothing in this scene and a distinct lack of friendliness. Can I ask what this is about? I have something of his. And that would be? A million dollars. Please hold. The ejection marks on the shells fired from the suspect shotguns are identical to the marks on the shell casings found at the Night Owl. I want confessions, Edmund. Number nine, good cop, angry cop, LA Confidential. I'm talking about the gas chamber. And you haven't even asked me what this is about. You got a big guilty sign around your neck. To be fair to the good cop in this scene, he does appear to have everything under control. It's the speed of proceedings that gets bad cop Russell Crowe so angry. I just wanted to lose my cherry. <laughs> you don't die, so I don't die. Not only does he march into the room uncalled for, he pulls out a gun. Not only does he pull out a gun, he puts it in the suspect's mouth. His temper snaps a nanosecond before the chair does. And then it's all out aggression. Boy, does it get results though. 109 Avalon, Brown Corner House, upstairs. Is it safe? Number eight, open wide and say, ah, Marathon Man. No, it's not safe. It's very dangerous. Be careful. As if the dentist wasn't torturous enough already. Lawrence Olivier's Nazi doctor adds all new dimensions to your bad dreams. You have a, a cat, quite a cavity here. Is it safe? Look, I tell you, I can't do it. With all interrogation scenes, we tend to put ourselves in the interrogatee's shoes. Here, it's too easy to imagine and too horrifying as a result. Life can be that simple. Relief, discomfort. Now, which of these I next apply? That decision is in your hands. The reminder that a healthy tooth is more sensitive than our regular cavities has us squirming. A live, freshly cut nerve is infinitely more sensitive. The point of view dentist drill and high pitched whirring have us almost passing out. Uh, I know I behave terribly, but I had to be sure what you knew. Do you know who I am, Mr. Wally? I give up. Who are you? I'm the Antichrist. Number seven, Sicilian slander, true romance. We're gonna have a little Q&A, and at the risk of sounding redundant, please, make your answers genuine. Christopher Walken calls it a Q&A, and it's an A-grade interrogation. The mob wants to know where Clarence Worley is, but his father doesn't feel like telling them. To buy himself a few more minutes, Clifford begins to dissect Vincenzo Cocotti's Sicilian heritage. Sicilians have uh, black blood pumping through their hearts. And he doesn't do so kindly. <laughs> the laughter that ensues and the operatic music are a classic backdrop to a classic killing. I haven't killed anybody since 1984. The gang find what they need immediately afterwards, though, meaning he died in vain but also in glory. It's this family for good. <laughs> Number six, striking down upon the Pulp Fiction. Hey kids, how you boys doing? True Romance was written by Quentin Tarantino 
and this scene was directed by him. It sees Jules Winfield and Vincent Vega invade the apartment of Brett and his fast food eating friends. Hamburgers, the cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. They want a briefcase and retribution for their gangster boss, Marcellus Wallace. We happy? Yeah, we happy. Jules does the talking while Vincent ominously potters in the kitchen, but they both come together for the scene's epic climax. It's routine, it's ruthless, it's world famous cinema. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Yes! What truck? The truck with the guns, go. Go. <laughs> Number five Kaiser Soze, who? The Usual Suspect. Can you hear me in the back? Hello? This entry is more than a scene, as the movie is entirely built around police interrogation. Can I get some coffee? In a while. Let's talk about the lineup. I'm really thirsty. I used to dehydrate as a kid. One time it got so bad my piss come out like snot. I'm not kidding, it was all thick and good. Get coffee. The Usual Suspects uses an unusual framing device to explore the backstory of Verbal Kint. I like cops. I would have liked to have been a fed myself, but my CP always... Verbal, did. you're not telling us everything. I know you know something. The cops want clues as to Kaiser Soze's identity and whereabouts, and they pinpoint Kevin Spacey's crippled bit part criminal as a means to extract the information. I'm smarter than you, and I'm going to find out what I want to know, and I'm going to get it from you whether you like it or not. Flipping between police office and the action, the film is a jigsaw, and we're the ones piecing it together. Afraid of what? Freedom. I knew it was Kaiser Soze. How do you shoot the devil in the back? What if you miss? Wow. You've taken good care of you, buddy. Number four, Double Owl 7, Casino Royale. Such a waste. It's Daniel Craig's first outing as Bond, and it's bound to leave you shaken and stirred. A model of masculinity, he dons his birthday suit for this scene, but we swoon for an altogether different reason. The bottom of his chair is cut out with more than mild discomfort in mind. I'll feed you what you see not to value. Questions are asked, but answers aren't given, prompting a mangling of his manhood that has both genders wincing. It's nearly full frontal, and it is full on. Yes! 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 yes. <laughs> now the whole world's gonna know that you don't scratch my balls! <laughs> he bashes the brains in with a baseball bat, what he does. Number three, the Bears baseball bat, Inglorious Bastards. That leaves two ways we can play this out. Either kill you, or let you go. In third place, Tarantino once again proves he's the master of filming face-to-face -face encounters. Quite frankly, watching Donnie beat Nazis to death is the closest we ever get to going to the movies. Donnie! Brad Pitt is Aldo Rain, and he has a German soldier in his sights. When he won't cooperate, an out-of-shot chiming starts up. Hear that? Yes. The bear Jew is in the shadows, and he's dying to make an entrance. Undeterred, the soldier stares his captor in the face and virtually signs his own death certificate. Death killing Jews. Bravery. He won't betray his people, but he will receive a brutal beating. Me? I was right here. Number two, Joker in jail, The Dark Knight. If we're gonna play games. Mm. I'm gonna need a cup of coffee. Ah, the good cop, bad cop routine? Not exactly. He's the ultimate bad cop. When Commissioner Gordon fails to coerce information from the Joker, he passes the responsibility on to Batman. The only sensible way to live in this world is without rules. And tonight you're gonna break your one rule. The caped crusader doesn't disappoint, and promptly begins to dismantle the Joker's resolve. It's as much a battle of minds as it is of muscle. And we can see that the Dark Knight is affected by the villain's philosophizing. Nothing, nothing to threaten me with. Nothing to do with all your strength. It's a cross-examination of both characters, and 
one in which it's difficult to tell who has the upper hand. You'll have to choose. He's at 250 52nd Street, and she's uh, on Avenue X. That's just it. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm in the middle of an interrogation. This moron is giving me everything. I don't give everything. How about I give you the finger, and you give me my phone call? What good is a phone call if you're unable to speak? What, what are you saying? That wasn't it? What I gave I'm you? I'm going to count to ten. You're going to tell me where the rabbit's foot is. Or she dies. Can we get you anything? A cup of coffee? No, thank you. Are your attorneys going to join us? Ms. Tremell has waived her rights to an attorney. Number one. Short skirts and sneak peeks, basic instinct. Did you kill Mr. Boz, Ms. Trammell? It's intense, it's iconic, it's interrogation at its very best. There's uh, no smoking in this building, Ms. Trammell. What are you gonna do, charge me with smoking? Basic Instinct takes its psychoerotic crime concoction and feeds us an undiluted dose in this famous scene. The answer is no, I didn't kill him. Sharon Stone is under inquiry, but she's by no means under control. Have you ever f***ed on cocaine, Nick? There are five men sitting before her, and she plays the room with ease. She smokes because she wants to, she seduces because she can. She crosses her legs, and the whole room submits. It's nice. She's so bad, she has to be good, right? I'd have to be pretty stupid to write a book about killing and then kill somebody the way I described it in my book. I'd be announcing myself as the killer. I'm not stupid. Do you agree with our list? You can always take comfort in the fact you never had a choice. Which interrogation scene is your favorite? I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. For more grueling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You really aren't going to tell me, are you? <laughs>